गुड आफ्टरनून अगेन टू ऑल ऑफ यू सो आई थिंक सिंगल ने अच्छा गुड जॉब एंड नाउ वी हैव कम टू द लॉन्ग वेटेड मोमेंट टू हियर द गेस्ट लेक्चर फ्रॉम आर डिस्टिंग्विश्ड एक्सटर्नल एग्जामिनर डॉक्टर तेजस्वी प्रकाश मैडम इज प्रिंसिपल साइंटिस्ट एंड हेड ऑफ द डिवीजन ऑफ फ्लोरल एंड मेडिसिनल क्रॉप्स ऑफ इंडियन इंस्टीट्यूट ऑफ हॉर्टिकल्चर रिसर्च बेंगलुरु आई थिंक अब आई एम गोइंग टू एडवांस स्टेजेस So let me just take a few seconds. So she is a plant breeder, basically, and all those Arca marigold varieties, Arca rose varieties, all were bred by Madam. Let us give her a big round of applause for that. Yes. So uh, she has bred around for 24 varieties in tuberose, carnation, rose, and marigold. She has also brought out one mutant in carnation called Arca flame. We saw them in. We saw the uh, variety. I think you all have seen it when you went there. Otherwise, we have have to go and have a look at those varieties. Some of them which we also grow here, we know that. And uh, she is. I just uh, tell what I know because this is too long. So, Madam was instrumental in uh, finalizing the dust characterization, which is very very important for plant variety protection. You know that she has contributed a lot for that. And she has done it for rose and uh, marigold, apart from many other crops. Chrysanthemum also she has contributed. Uh, she is the recipient of many awards, and she has uh, many accomplishments, to name a few. She is member of Indian delegation to Germany during 2018 to study uh, or to implement plant variety protection of rose. Okay, and member of Indian delegation to the Netherlands. And uh, to study the impact of plant variety protection and development of Dutch plant breeding industry. Okay, and she has chaired many um, sessions, international sessions in many conferences, including the Indian International Horticulture Congress uh, in Canada during 2002. She is a member of international uh, scientific committee uh, in organizing the symposium of plant genetic resources. Fabric of Horticulture's Future during 2002 in Canada. She is a member of National Scientific Committee in organizing several national conferences and symposia, and she is a member of committee to develop dust testing guidelines for rose and marigold, as I already told you. She is working in close association with the PDD and FRA, and she has done many, many uh, published many articles and books. So she is one of the most renowned. Horticulture breeder, so we must be very fortunate to have Madam here to be present with us. Let's say good afternoon to everyone, and uh, thank you, Dr. Dasa, for that nice introduction, Dr. Chitra, for coordinating the team, and special thanks for my friend Rosa Kuchlakshmi who is here to join this lecture actually. Thank you. And uh, just to give you some breeding of cover crops, just the idea of what I thought on our Florida right here, right? So, and uh, most of you are working in the breeding or uh, cultural. Okay, okay, both, both, everything. Okay. So, well, what does that come into the mind when you say the Florida cultural? The first thing we think of the flower, particularly the landscape thing. Right, that's the uh, uh, flower uh, you always see the uh, flowers. So when we say the breeding, uh, it has to. Uh, I mean, multiple aspects. I'm just trying to say the multiple aspect of the breeding because one is that you know. I mean, first you have to be clear of what you are doing, right? Mm -hmm. So one is that uh, the landscape. This is the floriculture industry, tea industry is a big business. Okay. I. Can I continue now? Okay. Hope you are uh, with me. You have not forgotten whatever I have said now. Okay. So I just want to give a brief about how the industry is moving. Okay. See, when I joined uh, the survey, it was like, what is floriculture? There was nothing. Like in the sense, floriculture means garden, this thing. What is that? I am going to breed. There was no idea. Okay. Because it was never a commercial business that big. Okay, then came the industry in the second phase. This was I'm saying when the 90s started coming. Suddenly there was a boom for export oriented. 
So 100% export oriented uh, units started coming. And that is the time we never had because commercially flowers were, though everywhere flowers were there, it was just a backyard plant. Not that it was a big industry like it was happening. So when the export oriented, the like they started saying it's a sunshine industry, 100% export oriented, and all the subsidies started coming. And we never had any technology. We never had any variety. So what it started was all the varieties were being imported from the other countries. All the technologies were being imported from the other countries. We were like a laborer in India. We were producing it. We were selling. Okay, this is what was happening. Then came the third phase. Like uh, when now the uh, this new century started, twenty uh, the same uh, like the last two decades. What we are seeing is. See, before the bokeh culture was never there in our country. It was either the garland mala. We used to take flowers to when we go to the relative house, but it was not the bokeh we used to take. When the someone comes to the place, we would garland them. We would never give them the bokeh. So now that whole culture has started of the bokeh, and with that the demand has increased. And you all know that India has got so many. So much of such a population of the, I mean, the people can buy flowers. So our population who can spend on flowers is much bigger than all the European countries. Okay, so it is not we are not laborers, we are consumers. That means we need not have to produce to sell to someone. Okay, we deserve the quality products. We want the quality products. Got it? And our requirements may be different. I may be prefer some particular color. They may be preferring certain colors, but our colors may be different. Okay? So we can make money out of exporting, but it's not that we have to grow only for the export business. So with that, all the orientation again change. So we are now we are producing the variety even for ourselves. Because now our farmers become so intelligent, they produce even the cut flower in the open field. Okay, so we have to produce the varieties, if not just for the protected cultivation, even for the production in the open field. Okay, so now the whole idea is that we want to have branded. I'm not going to take what they give left over to us and sell them back. I want to do something of our own branded. Right? This should be and this should be more and more with the next generation. Okay. So now you should think what is going to be the new need. Okay. The whole idea is that we should have a vision. What is the new thing is required? So one is the plant and flower architecture. The whole architecture of the plant that we have to think which should be good for the for which would be for the Vertical frame, which would be for wall, right? Which would be for the farmer? Which would be in the rainy season? Should it be tall? Should it be dwarf? Rainy season, it should be dwarf. Summer season, it has to be tall. So we we have to say in the heavy rainfall area, it is a different type of architecture. So we need to look what is the requirement, okay? And as I said, we need to look for the fragrance is the one of the things getting more and more. So this is another area we have to think. We have to have the program flowering. We want flower for the Pauli festival. Not just the new year or the Christmas. We want to have for the particular season. So it should be coming like that. We should be able to program the, I mean, the variety should be like that. Then the, see, I said the interior, so many times I said it is going to matter whether it is the inside atmosphere or the uh, temperature, whatever. So you have to have the planters. So according to the planter, the structure of the plant also have to be different. So you have to look into that also. And I said the climate resilience, it should be, and it should be environmental friendly. You should not be drawing more and more water. The thing is, what would happen is if... If uh, water requirement is more, we will be being questioned because they would say that if the limited water is there, where should be the priority? Put our flower. 
which which crop should be getting the priority food crops right so blame would be on us that you are using it for the flower production and you are so our farmers i mean poor people are not getting enough rice to eat right so we have to breed a variety which is consuming less and less giving more and more got it then synthetic seeds we want to save it we want to transport it we want to exchange it so we have to have synthetic seed and cryopreservation which are amenable for that okay and we also have to look into local and indigenous jasmine is required for tamil nadu so you you just can't be thinking for someone else you have to work on jasmine you have to think that what is the requirement for your farmer so the local and indigenous indigenous things you have to look into okay and some of the issues what is present for the future like maybe you must be having some courses on ornamental breeding advances in breeding flower crop something so every crop they would be listing out what are the breeding objectives right so every breeding objective usually what they would be saying pest and disease resistant common objective so you can answer any question you know the pest and disease uh, what is the breeding objective you would be listing out which would never going to exhaust because with the changing environment there are no new races new uh, uh, i mean new problems are going to come and we have to breed the varieties to meeting addressing them so this would always be remaining best and disease resistant and the i said the post harvest or the stem flight is the important part then the flower color shape it 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 would be ever demanding uh, i mean the objective then the floral and leaf analysis and detail in sense i hope you understand this so if it is uh, if it is ethylene and sensitive that means it would die fast so you have to breed a variety that can will be having the less ethylene sensitive okay so now i was saying about the opportunities right now i would say what is going to be our strategy okay we have so many objectives how are we going to breed right now this is our objective so there there can be only two way one is new from nowhere you have to bring in somewhere with that is that or it is there somewhere i think got it uh, strategy you would be looking into only this principle you should remain whether i am getting to go new from nowhere or from somewhere i am going to get what do i mean by this you must be having some biotechnological courses biotechnology courses you must have attended so i am not completely going to deal on that particularly when i say no way when i want to introduce something from no way the biotechnology is the best option either i can from the some other source or i can cut from the existing and make it new so you must be knowing this yeah please come in <laughs> so uh, so we have transgenic when you get it from outside and we have cisgenic between the same species you would be getting so that you won't be having the problem of this transgenic issue okay then also now the gene editing is the major thing as i said either you can bring it from somewhere or you can cut and remove if it is make this gene is making susceptible cut it and remove throw it so that it will be resistant so the upper, uh, uh, i mean methodology would be different so i won't be see then if the gene is there gene may be present silence it ask it not to express silencing the genes that is another approach okay so these are the things i think you should be studying it in detail in the biotechnological course i'm not going to go in detail and this also you must be knowing the one of the major things all the floriculture should be knowing is blue color blue color is not there in rose blue color is not there in chrysanthemum blue is not there in pollination but we got all that blue from different species into all this and we have the transgenic one but commercially how much it is success how many of you would like to have a blue rose or a red rose red rose valentine day you would prefer to have a red rose not the blue rose okay so this is what so the things say so you can pick up how you would be okay so again our whole 
technology of the genetic engineering would revolve around what is this diagram what is this pathway for the color pigments how every uh, step the color can be i mean the whole process of gene expression can be moved from white red or the yellow right three categories we have so this is it again this would be needed in the genetic engineering again i am not going to touch in detail about that okay then one is bringing from nowhere right right nowhere somewhere okay now i am saying bringing it from somewhere nowhere i said how we will be doing it so some somewhere the very first dump somewhere okay so one of the major thing you should know is why you know what is this plant why it is important It's a big business in US and European countries. This is time Christmas season, right? Because they would be need need a lot in that. Actually, this is the original one, Euphorbia. But this is the now ported one. That is one of the mutant they have observed. Now they have observed the nine bud mutant. Okay. And lotus, you said something you observed with the small one, something with the more petal, something with the three. Okay. This is something somewhere you would be having this existing. because of the so this is one of the photos i found <clears throat> you know ladakh and leh it's a you think kashmir as a cool area at the same time ladakh and leh cool but at the same time very dry area how do you think of roses growing pampered right pampering like you have to give lot of water lot of fertilizer the condition should be good maybe protected cultivation all that sort of but look at this rose where it is growing one some mid between the creeks of the stones rocks and the, see the beautiful yellow flower that is the rose of artida this is they i try to get it but i couldn't succeed it in survive in this region but we have this is the major species which has contributed for yellow color in rose so if someone asks us royalty for rose we should say india has india is the one who has contributed for this yellow color give me royalty not we are going to give you royalty got it so there are so many things for you people to address okay this is another species see the size of the plant rose okay see this this is for the comparison i have put this is like the where you would be staying means more than the 10 feet around 10 feet at least and look at the plant size this is also and see the condition of the soil okay very dry nothing you can't expect to grow rose like that but those are the hardy genes you should be getting it from somewhere okay this is one of the healthy mia roses now i mean for us rose means multiple petals right but this is the rose single petal rose with the eye that is a characteristic feature of it now this is becoming very popular in the landscape industry because it is a hardy this has already become but we have a long way to go bring in the rose of orchidia it showed you so we have lot to cut okay then the mutation okay this is something bud spot you are saying okay so the bud spot is for some i mean most of historical sub breeding had depended upon this protection okay most of the time because it is a vegetative it propagated and they were saying about the pent up right most of these floriculture species because it is vegetative it propagated these are all polyploid okay when the polyploid is there when something changes it doesn't affect the whole thing like one chromosome could change but all the other chromosomes are perfect so it would be functioning perfect so you get the change that's why it survives so this is the one of the common thing i think kaimutur i mean tnu has released many varieties as far as i know most of them are selection okay clonal selection but for mutation but this is one of the way for sure okay now i just want to introduce to one more thing. uh you know all this what is this marker that time dr ganga was asking me whether it has the perfect genetic genetically it is different and all but molecular marker is one of the things you would be thinking for using it staking the character so many things are there but it needs lot of money for lab everything even you should be skilled hand you should be knowing the technique of the thing 
I'm telling you one simple. Okay. What is this? What is this? Lot of dust. What is this? Pollen. Right? One flower will give you how many pollen? Number of pollen. And to produce one seed, how many pollen required? One. So you have so many. See, breeding depends upon only one principle. Select it, then reject it. Means I should be having thousand. I should select one. Reject all the things. That is the best breeding. Okay. How can I do? Because most of these are wastefully propagated. They don't set seed. If they set seed, it doesn't get pollinated. How I am going to do this thing? Okay. This is the basic model of the floriculture breeding. This is why. What is the strategy you have to have? That's why one of the interesting strategy you can use is gametophytic selection. Okay. Why? What is the plant selection? Sporophytic selection. What is the gametophytic selection from the pollen? When I have so many of pollen, can I select that particular one to give me that plant? Okay, so there is a lot of development has happened in this gametophytic selection. The the pollen is the one which is having the gene, right? That is the one who which is going to contribute. So why don't you select that particular pollen? How to select it? We can select it for the resistance. We can select it for the climate change. We can select it for the vigor, but we can't select it for the color. That which is the floriculture thing. That is the one thing we can't use it. But many other things we can use it. And for each one of it, there is a technique. If you are curious, you can go back and look for many papers. You will be able to find it. Okay. So see, I mean, this is particularly I have used. This is something I. Felt interest because I had no way. I was given the work to work with carnation. I was asked to do with the breeding with the rose, rose which can't even set seed. Then you are very okay. I'll select few which will set. Then the seed will not even germinate. How I'm going to? How I'm going to? The, I have been taught select and reject. I when I get two plants, what I will select, what I would reject. Are you able to understand the problem? So we really have to depend upon that, and that is what we try to do with the gametophytic selection. So when I'm applying so many pollen, if I can pick up that particular pollen using a strategy, it can be simple strategy. What is the strategy? What is the selection when there is a competition? That is the principle, right? So how do you make it to compete? Either there should be more pollen, right? If you want to have the variability, that's pollen, so that everything would get charged. If you want the best one, make it to complete, so the best one would be selected. So put as many as possible, more than what it requires. Put it in such harsh condition, pass it through the toxin, and you get that one winner which would get you seed. Got it? This is the approach, is the best approach. What I have found when we can't get the germination. This is what we have done. And this is how we got some of the selections. Okay. Then another interesting thing in flower uh, floriculture is male sterility. For us, male sterility is important because I said when the ethylene is there, it would become shelf life would lose, senescence would happen. When the ethylene would come, when the seed pollen is there, and then when the seed setting is there. What if if the seed setting is not there? What if the pollen is not there? Then there is no question of senescence. That means it would live forever and ever. For long it would live. So male sterility for other crop people, it is a strategy to breed. For us, it is a strategy to breed. As well, it is it is a strategy to end. What do you what do I mean by end? I say you develop a very different mixture. Okay, then there is no pollination. Then the flower will not die; it will live forever. And got it? That's the thing. Okay, this is the classic. Something I'll show show you in marigold. Okay, uh, we have two type of sterility. You know this? What is this? What type of sterility? This is a petal. This about the structure. What is this? This is not the sterile. This is the petal sterility. Okay, this is the perfect flower. It is the Hermaphrodite. So this is the flower you want, right? So you want the sterile flower. 
this is my beginning this is my end why this is beginning i can cross it so that because there are so many sigma so that i can get multiple sigma breeding is this but i want this flower so that it will never die got it that is the strategy okay and this is something as a academic also you should be thinking why what how as a research right so this is something you can think of you know this model abcd model have you heard of this so these are the basic needs what gives for the flower we deal with flowers right so this is the basic flower this gives for sepal when both are there it would give petal when these two are there it would give carpel only when this is there ovule okay so i remove this stamen okay if i remove this stamen i get petal okay when it change when it becomes stamen becomes petal what happens we want double you said double lotus you are having so does it have stamen have you checked it you check it okay most of the times what happens is all this flower it get converted okay this genes get mutated and they become the petal because this are overlapping one so it gives petal so this is another interesting academic study research data which is useful for us which one can pursue with it okay this is some of the things we were doing with uh, see this is just to say that how like the same abcd model i am trying to fit into the presence of stigma presence of petal and are consider the total the energy of the flower to produce all that what it can produce see it can be see here if you can i don't expect much it just you can know that this is anther this is a petal this is stigma okay when this goes off it can convert into petal okay then i get the petal at stage okay when all the things are there it is perfect hermaphrodite flower when all this when anther goes off when the petal goes off i get the apetal i showed you the apetal at one where there was no petal i showed you the abcd when the genes get mutated got it so this is how it would be shifting okay then the another thing all this breeding i said we are not we are not breeding here because people take it you don't have the motivation so one of the thing is protect and nourish so now we have, you, you all must be knowing about the ppvfr and others even uh, your tnu use into that right into the uh, dust testing of uh, jasmine okay so you should also remember that now they said that they have i mean they from the satyamangalam or this thing from that uh, metropolium you got one uh, uh, jasmine from that you made a selection of nine but where it was originally there so that that is a farmer said we should say say of the farmer said we should give them if someone is sick you can even even you in your wherever you go to go on your rap wherever you go you should be knowing there are people who are observing multiple they can under the ppvfra they can be given genes savior award genome savior this is one of the Latest contribution of the rule of this country. Okay, we have farmers' right. We have genome savior award. So we have to think of that, and you can do it and take the breeders' right. Okay, I just show some classical example to give an idea of the results of the breeding, which are the varieties bred by me. Okay, so just to give a glimpse of it. Okay, see now when we say hybrid in flower crowns, or see when when we say mostly but hybrid. it is every year the hybrid seeds are given when they say in pulses when they say in cereals hybrids or the oil seed hybrids every seeds are given when they say in mango what say the hybrid is one it is the same they won't give the seed they will get multiplied right so that is the major difference if your crop is sensitively propagated then you cross it you fix it that is the heterocystic okay then you get the hybrid that's the one but no seed industry would be interested in that okay seed industry would be interested in f1 hybrid because they would farmers would go back to them every year so the marigold also f1 hybrids are there okay these are some of the hybrids we have bred using the mixed sterility 
and I said that he ended up in the pedal earth. I said the end has to be sterile, right? These are our end petaloid made sterile. And Shub I said marigold is required for the keratinite content also. This is the one we have bred with the high keratinite content. This is in the yellow category. I said we need the different from different shades. Okay, this is also yellow, this is also yellow, but there are different shades are there, it is required. Okay, and this is another. I said why the farmer has to come back to me again and again. Okay, why can't he propagate it very simply? Right? These are the propagated hybrid. What I showed first of all, those are the seed propagated. These are wasted to be propagated hybrid. Farmers can take it. They can go and multiply it. They don't have to come back to me. They can produce it. Same is our Arka Agni. They can be multiplied. Okay. Then I said that we have uh, the, so I showed you classical example for the hybrid. Classical example for Yapan hybrid when you have to cross and do. Every year they have to take Sweet from me for that Abhi, Shuba, Panu, I had given you now, Dr. Chitra, all those are, all the A's and whatever I had given, all those are F1 hybrid. You won't be getting the seeds in that. Okay, you have to come back to me again. <laughs> okay, that's it. But uh, see, these Arka Peri, Arka Madhu, we have done the French very good. These are the open varieties, open poly. Leave it, you get the seed, use it. Okay, so. So three classical breeding in floriculture I have shown you. You know OP, I showed hybrid respectively propagate. I said hybrid cross breeding. Okay, that's it. Okay, and uh, this is the one. Okay, that's what I want to say. The same what Suganya was explaining about the nine birds. Okay, every time she said that nine birds are not coming. Okay, this is the one variety Arka. Okay, one of the students has also worked here. Okay, so this the whole point is you would miss it if you are not doing the pruning. Okay, if you are not doing the pruning in the time, you won't get the bunch flower. If you don't get the bunch flower, you don't get the yield. Got it? The cultural practices are very important. That's why I asked her, are you going to do the clipping every time I asked her? Okay, see this bunch only it would give yield to them. For that, they have to practice. Okay, and we have some of the Flower varieties for the protected cultivation also. We named it Swadhen because I said we are depending upon the imported variety. And here in the Karnataka, in the dry region, now one of the farmers is growing it in the open field. And he calls me and says that he is getting the an average rate of three rupees per flower, which polyhouse growers are also getting. Okay, so instead of Bangalore to Koppal. And he was being transported from the poly house. Why can't he give it for the local? I think you connected this well yesterday, right? So this is Kaswadesh, and uh, and at that time, if either he is selling it bulk as a three rupees or individual as a five rupees per flower he is selling. Okay, this is again I was assistant to mine. I'm just showing the glimpse of it. These are all which have come by genetic selection. Okay. So I said the strategy, I told you opportunity, I told you strategy, now I'm saying the result. Okay, this is the possible. I said about the anthocyanin content and nutraceutical factor. This is one of our variety, Arka Parimana. This is very rich in antioxidants. It is very uh, rich in anthocyanin. So it can be converted into multiple food products. It is rich in the oil extraction. So the farmers can use it in the multiple forms. But you should always know that fragrance is negatively correlated with the shelf life. So if there is no shelf life for this. This is another very funny. This is also rich in the aroma content. And this is for the gardening. You must have got this seeds and all. Yeah. I mean, you collect it, but then it is for the uh, university to preserve it, multiply it, taste it. That depends upon you. This is some of the farmer I just want that. See, they, they are growing, they are not making it in good yield. But they have to do the regular pruning. If you don't do the regular pruning, like the nine buds is not there, that variety will not give you the yield. Unless it gives in a bunch. So it is not just a breeder in horticulture, but horticulture skill practice also equally important. Otherwise, just the potential will not be able to give. Okay? This is in the. Protected cultivation, Ivory, I showed you. 
that flower it is okay i mean simply i was uh, anti oxidant how much anti oxidant it has we have one more line this rich in the anthocyanin okay just to give you the glimpse of it see the green tea is what we take for the anti oxidant right and see the rose when you make the rose tea see the anti oxidant so why can't we recommend rose tea why we should go for the green tea from asam right so you have to okay and for your reference whatever i have said if you have to go back go to our website in the resource section we have put the e okay any time you can open all this arca stand for ihr varieties so all our varieties in production technology are the roses i have made a separate book so that you can see it's not that everything we will be releasing there are so many we haven't released so whether released or not very good ones are there in the book to see it and appreciate because you want to come able to come to ih to see it so you can see on the virtual platform okay so with that i'll say thank you anything to ask i, I think i have bored you enough tired of it enough So will you take up breeding in Karnataka, sir? I want to. Want to join as a breeder in company? Okay, then. See, our IHR has the procedure. When we go for testing after three years, we have our Digital Technology Identification Committee. Okay, so we put up the proposal there, and every scientist from the different team would come. They would see. They would. Say whether it, and meanwhile we will also you many farmers would be visiting us. We would also also be evaluating. We would also have a scorecard based upon all this. Then again we will make a presentation and we will identify. See, so far the procedure has been we were releasing, it, we were giving it to farmers also. Now the rules have changed. Now the thing is uh, now it is gone. Go through the ASAP, then test. Then really now we whatever they were post it is it is through the university. It can't be. Yeah, that's what I mean. We can't be doing it. And the institute identifies we give the name, but not after the ASAP. And after the ASAP, okay. I'm on late still. Uh, no, I just want to say. So we give the variety name, and what happens is uh, we the procedure of variety release. You know. Either the state release, central release, all that. Then there is a CVRC presentation. Then it would be recommended, right? So one of the meetings, like all these my marigold varieties, when we presented, one variety we had it as Arka honey, honey. Okay. Then during the CVRC, the comment came: we should not have English name. Then we changed it to Arka mother. Okay. So I mean, because you ask the naming, na, I'm saying that. I mean, there can be objection like we do release it and make it, but final release it would come into the gadget notification. So when the gadget notification has to come, that's the proposal. When the things also have to be accepted. By yeah, yeah. And the way I heard, that's what I say. The miniature, that's what I said. Nowhere, somewhere you got it from somewhere uh, selection. But if you know the origin. Make sure that the farmer gets the credit. If some, it must be some villages. Maybe most of the locusts are from the temples surrounding that area. Very good. That's what uh, morning my friend was there when you were saying from Canada. She was saying six dollars per pound. So it can the, the market in the export also. So we have to think locally, act locally, make money out, right? Make take money from them. So don't become their link. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Value addition can be in a multiple form. One is that you create a product out of it. Then there is another thing is that uh, when you are exporting, why do you want to export simple flower? Make a garland. I think here only in uh, they are doing. That is another way of making. And because we have, and many times I have found that our florists are very artistic. They Come out with such a design. See, I don't think that the cut roses when it came, people never even would have imagined that petals should be twisted, 
twisted to make garner now those garments are the most prized one and that technology i mean that is our people technology our uh, whoever is the local artist lo local florist local florist thing so that is where you are uh, that is what you have to make money